Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today, I'm going to be talking about ICT applications, chapter 6. So, it's basically talking about how ICT is used in our daily life and in our daily activities. So, this chapter covers communication applications, interactive communication applications, data handling applications, measurement applications, control applications, and last but not least, modeling applications. So first, let's talk about communication applications. One of the beauty of ICT is that it allows us to communicate with each other in many different ways. So we can use the following to communicate with each other. So for example, newsletters, websites, multimedia presentation, music scores, cartoons, flyers, and posters. We have various types of communication. Personal communication, where we talk to friends or families or close ones. Business communication, talking to customers about your products, sending messages to your clients and, and advertising your products. Paper-based communication, this type of communication involves producing hard copy documents. Creating a document suitable for printing is often used uh, as desktop publishing or DTP. So advantages of paper-based communication. Documents can be brought even to disabled people. Document can be printed in Braille for blind, for blind people. And the document can be carried out and read whenever you want. However, it also has its disadvantages. It costs time and money for distribution. It is not possible to add exciting animation effects to a printed document. And it can be very exp expensive to print off the document. Examples of uh, paper-based communication are newsletters, posters, and flyers, like I said before. Next is digital communication. Gi digital communication requires a computer and a screen in order to present the document. Advantages of digital communication, far cheaper as there is no printing involved. You can add exciting effects uh, and animations. Communication can be interactive. For example, users can leave comments and likes. You can see videos. However, disadvantages often requires expensive software. Some website might require to learn. And complex document obviously requires time to build. Websites. So there are different types of websites. Uh, it is made of collection of text, images, videos, animations, and so on. It is widely used by companies and is easy, easily accessible by people if they have internet. Uh, example of interactive communication applications that are blogs. So blogs, this is a type of website used to communicate a specific topic and it allows comments from followers and regularly gets updated. Another one is social networking website. Uh, this is a chat room website. It allows audio and video calls within a group of people. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and so on are the examples. There's also instant messaging apps. These are applications used to communicate messages instantly. Uh, they are called instant apps because the response is fast as compared to other means of communication. Examples are WhatsApp, Telegram, WeChat, and so on. So next is uh, data handling applications. So a number of applications make use of simple data handling techniques such as survey uh, used by small businesses to collect information from their customers, uh, OMR which is optical mark reader or OCR which is optical character reader is used to read data from a survey paper. Address lists, uh, computers and phones are used to store address and contact details of people. School reports, Microsoft Excel is used to input a student's report. Mail merging is also used to generate the reports automatic, automatically to reduce the stress and time. Next is measurement applications. So computers are sometimes used alongside sensors to measure phys uh, physical quantities and this is known as data logging. So we will be talking about scientific experiments, electronic timing, environmental monitoring. So first, sensors and data logging. So what are sensors? Sensors are used to automatically detect and measure physical quantities. Sensors are used because of the advantages of sensors. They are more reliable. 
they are more accurate than manual reading, response time is faster, they can work longer, work 24-7, uh, automatic readings, the readings are more consistent and safer to be used in dangerous dangerous places. So here's an example of how sensors can be used. Uh, assuming you are conducting an experiment that records the temperature of water as it transforms from solid ice to hot steam, you will need the following. First, a thermostat sensor to measure the temperature of water. ADC, which is uh, analog digital converter to convert the analog temperature data into digital and computer to receive and lock the digital temperature data. Computer can only understand digital data, that's why the data has to go through the ADC first. And software is will analyze the data. Environment, environment monitoring. Environmental monitoring is where data is collected to be used for purposes such as weather forecasting, water quality in rivers and streams, levels of air pollution, next control devices. So sensors can also be used alongside computers to control a range of devices. Some of these devices include security lights, burglar alarms, central heating controllers, computer controlled greenhouses, automatic cookers, automatic washing machines, microwave ovens. So earlier we said sensors could be used alongside sensors. Sensors could be used alongside computers, sorry, to measure physical quantities such as uh, temperature and light intensity. Now sensors can also be used alongside computers to control a range of devices. The process goes like this. Input, the sensor detects data in the environment around it. The process is where data pass to a computer inside the device, uh, which analyzes it and decides what action to take. And the computer sends instructions to the device telling it what to do. Output, the device will carry out the instructions. Environment monitoring. So here is a diagram of how it works. As you can see, the input, the, uh, the sensor detects the data. It was sent to the ADC first. Once again, because you have to remember, computer can only understand digital data. Then the computer or the microprocessor will normally they will store preset value, analyze the data to decide what action to take. Then once uh, it decide what action to take, it will then send it back to the device, and then the device will carry out the instructions either to work, turn off, or uh, turn on. Examples of sensors, there's temperature and heat sensor to detect changes in temperature. The light sensor used to detect the brightness of light. Sound sensor, uh, detect the loudness of sound. Humidity sensor, detect water on air. Load and weight sensor, uh, detect weight used in digital scale. There's the proximity sensor, detect how near or far something is, is normally used in cars. And infrared sensor, detect movement used uh, in burglar alarm. Advantages of using computer to control devices rather than people. It's cheaper, no need to employ lots of people. It's higher work rate, computer doesn't get bored or tired, can work 24-7. Safer, computer can work uh, in dangerous places. It's more accurate, computer responds to inputs from sensor accurately every time. And it's faster, computers will respond to data received from sensors very quickly. Next is modeling application. So a number of applications make use of data handling techniques such as survey, address lists, school reports. Sometimes the questionnaires and answer scripts are read by using OCR and OMR respectively. Robotics. Robots are used in many areas of manufacturing. The robot is programmed uh, with a sequence of instructions which allow it to carry out the series of tasks. Robots are equipped with a series of sensors to gather information about their surroundings. Advantages of robots, they can work in dangerous places, they can work 24-7, they are less expensive in the long run, they have high productivity and greater consistency, and they can also do boring repetitive tasks. However, uh, they can cause higher unemployment for skilled laborers and uh, cause job losses. Some skills might be lost due to replacement of robot. The initial setup is expensive, the maintenance is also expensive and requires a technical know-how to set up the robot. And if the robot mal malfunctions, the whole process will be affected. Next, booking system. How booking system works? First, the user selects their desired options or manually type in the options. The system search database for availability. The result is shown on the screen. If the option is available, then the user select book now. 
the space becomes temporarily unavailable until the user makes the payment. The user enters their personal information and billing information. The system validates the payment option. And if the payment is successful, the space is assigned to the user and marked as booked uh, in the database. Advantages of online booking than uh, manual booking is it prevents double booking, which could happen in paper-based uh, booking system. The customer gets immediate feedback on the availability of seats. The customer can make booking at any time of the day because it's online. During the booking, customers tend to provide their emails. This makes email advertisement easier for companies to promote their business. And it is less expensive because there's no need to print tickets. After the booking is successful, the system generates QR code which can be scanned at entrance. However, it also has its disadvantages. The setting up and maintenance of online booking systems is costly. All customers using this service need a computer and reliable internet connection because it is online in the end of the day and you need internet connection all the time. It is difficult to cancel the booking and get back your money. If the system breaks down or during maintenance, it is impossible to book online. And booking online does not allow you to build a personal relationship with the travel agents. Next is banking application. Uh, we'll be talking about automated teller machine or ATM. I'm sure most of you have heard of this. This is a machine where people collect cash. How does it work? A user inserts a card into ATM. PIN is entered by using the keypad. A number of options are given such as withdraw, transfer, check and check balance. The user selects the cash option and the user chooses which cash they want to withdraw or type in the amount. The user is asked if he wants a receipt and then the card is returned and the money is dispensed. The user's account is then debited. So from there we get internet banking. Using internet banking requires good security. It allows the transfer of sums of money between accounts, payment of bills, ordering statement, and so on. As the online shopping increases, the impact of internet banking becomes important. Advantages of internet banking. There is no need to travel to banks. As such, it reduces transport fare. Users have access to worldwide market and can look for cheaper products. Disabled and elderly people can shop online and make payment easily without leaving their homes. Is available 24-7 and can be accessed anywhere, anytime. And some people might find it less embarrassing asking for a bank loan, they can just borrow through their online banking. There also will be less queue at the banks or checkouts at the shops. Disadvantages There is a possibility of isolation and lack of socialization if everyone stays at home and uses online banking. There are possible health risks due to lack of exercise if people use the online banking. Security issues are major concerns such as hacking. It is necessary to have a computer and a reliable internet connection. It is possible to make error and mistakenly transfer money to someone else online. Next is the app expert system. This uh, expert system is uh, developed to mimic the expertise and knowledge of an expert in a particular field. Examples include diagnosing a person's illness for like um, in the medical or doctors, diagnostics, finding faults in a car, prospecting for oil and minerals, tax and financial calculation, even using strategy games such as chess like the AI, and roads uh, scheduling for delivery vehicles. So there are four parts, four very important parts in an expert system that you have to know. Knowledge base, rule base, inference engine, and user interface. Advantages of expert system is they provide consistent answers and are not affected by emotional reasoning. They never forget to answer a question when determining the logic. Using expert system reduces time to solve a problem. There's a chance of saving costs because no need of inviting the experts. It allows worldwide search and access to information. It also has obviously its advantages. They tend to lack common sense in some of the decision making processes. Lacking of emotional reasoning is an advantage and also a disadvantage at the same time. Error in the knowledge base can lead to incorrect decision making. They are expensive to set up and you have to learn how to use the system first and foremost. So now, this is an example uh, of a past paper question from IGCSE. The question says, the data will be collected from the river using a remote computer connected to sensors to measure the data. Explain why is it better to use this method rather than collecting the data manually. Basically, the question is asking uh, the advantages of sensor and why using sensor is better than using humans yourself and manually. 
Well, there are many advantages. First, uh, safer than a human measuring the depth of flood water. And continuous measurement monitoring can be carried out 24-7, such as when get tired. More accurate readings can be taken. Readings will be recorded immediately. Won't forget to take readings. Charts can be produced automatically. And more frequent readings can be taken. That'll be it. Thank you for listening. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.